All right, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Welcome to the Stockholm Board Water Week at home session on innovative finance for scaling active sustainable development goal six solutions. My name is Shabana Abbas and I'm an innovative finance at Aqua for All. On behalf of Aqua for All and our partners, the known communities in Cofin Investment Management, Water.org, Waste Foundation, Take a Stake Fund, Roots of Impact and Grand Challenges Canada, I warmly welcome you to this session. In our new COVID-19 world today, investing in water, sanitation and hygiene has become much more urgent and critical than ever before. There is a bigger responsibility on local governments, financial institutions, international donors and other key players to prioritize mobilization of the much needed financing for water and sanitation in the developing world. In our session today, we will be looking into, I'm going to move my slide. In our session today, we will learn about some of the emerging financial innovations that aim to accelerate access to finance for water and sanitation across both sides of the spectrum, supply and demand. That's including households and SMEs. We will specifically understand how these stimulate investments at different levels of scale and for different types of actors. Finally, we will showcase how philanthropic capital can really catalyze additional sources of <clears throat> into the water and sanitation sector. Um, I think my, there is some issue with my slides. Um, let's see. Stop sharing. All right, so it's working now. Sorry for the delay. Um, here's the session for, um, here's the plan for the session today. It's a 45 minute session, which means it's super short. We will start with the introduction presentation by Aqua for All, followed by six extremely short two minute presentation mm -hmm. of different financial innovations. Um, after that, we will move into the audience Q&A and with that, we'll come to the close of the session. Some housekeeping notes before we kick start the session. As you can see on the screen, there is a Q&A um, that you can click on. You can ask questions there. You can upvote on other questions. It will allow us to prioritize questions in case we, we run out of time. You can also ask questions anonymously if you prefer that. You're able to also chat with other attendees and make comments uh, during the session. This session is being recorded and will be uploaded on the CV YouTube channel under the World Water Week playlist. The slide deck, recording link, and speaker details will be shared with you in a follow-up email. As mentioned, the session is extremely short, and if we're not able to manage all the questions, we encourage you to reach out to the speakers after the session, also to explore potential partnerships. Before I invite my first speaker, I'd like to do another poll with you all to start warming up for the session. Um, this is to test your knowledge on impact investment um, so here you go and you have 20 seconds. Perfect, we're going to end the poll here. 71% um, thinks it's 6% of the total impact investments are allocated to the wash sector. Uh, I'm very proud to say this is the right answer. <laughs> and this answer is according to the um, Global Impact Investing Network's recent report. Um, this report also mentions that wash sector is one of the fastest growing sectors in terms of increased impact investments. Uh, one of the uh, key findings of the report is also that impact investors in the next five years are willing to increase their um, investments into the wash sector. So that's really promising. Uh, with that, I will 
I will hand over to our first speaker, which is Yozin, a Managing Director of Aqua for All, to further lay out the context for today's session and to also um, inform us about the work Aqua for All is doing in the field of innovative finance. Yozin, the floor is yours. I'm going to try to put up your presentation. Oh, yes. Uh, Yes. Hello, everyone, and thank you, Shabana, for this introduction. I'm really proud that we are with over 200 participants in this webinar. I've never spoken digitally, digitally to so many people. A uh, very, very warm welcome. Uh, I'm going to go straight in the presentation. We have a problem, and the problem is that, that, that there is a huge service gap. 2.1 billion people lack access to safe drinking water and 4.5 people lack access to sanitation as we defined under SDG 6. That doesn't only have a negative effect on the well-being of people, namely healthcare and education, but it also has a negative effect on the economy, sometimes even losses up to 7% of GDP. So how can we solve this? A very, very important issue is that capital needs to flow into the market. What we see is that there's in, insufficient public funds, and that's on the next slide. Uh, currently, we have 5 billion euros in grants available, whereas we need investments of up to 114 annually. It's not only a matter of, uh, of a lack of capital that flows into the market, there's also a missing link when it comes to the, the link between solutions in the market and the capital available. And this is why Agraf all focuses on bridging this gap. Who are we? We are a not-for-profit organization and we are a partner that is dedicated to bridge the gap between the service and the finance uh, gap that is out there. Our 40 million euro program, Making Water Count, has been allocated to us by our Ministry of Foreign Affairs. We focus mostly on business development through our innovation program and through our scaling program. The third pillar of our work and also the focus of today is to work with investors in order for us to understand how to actually scale, uh, uh, structure our scaling program. Our philosophy is to make sure that we work along the scaling pathway and therefore we take a very long-term perspective because I also believe that initiatives and enterprises need to be brought to that ready for investment. And what I've seen in the market so far is that there's too much a focus on a project orientation. As said, grant money is very limited available and therefore we need to spend it wisely. Aqua for All does this through market and sector development. We work on concepts and blended finance solutions that can be duplicated. We work on pipeline development through working with entrepreneurs. And we also de-risk invest investors. And we do this because it is so important with the, the grant money or the very high risk that we are able to take to really catalyze private investments. So we work with investors, both on demand as well as on supply side. By demand side, we mean that we want to work and we already work with financial institutions for them to be able to build up their wash portfolio, to be able to own land to households and SMEs in their own market. So that uh, households, for example, do have the money available to construct toilets or to have a household connection, etc. On su with supply side, we mean that we also work with investors that do direct investments in SMEs. On the next slide, we mapped um, the speakers of today and the initiatives that we are strongly collaborating with. Our focus in this webinar is on innovative finance solutions. We have mapped them for you, as you can see. Uh, grand challenges uh, Canada in the very beginning as they are very similar to the work of Aqua for All and the further down the scaling pathway the others. A few are funds with their own focus whether that be a full guarantee scheme or whether that be direct investments and a few are solutions that are dedicated structured solutions for enterprises to really get them to scale. An example that we put here because we find it very important is carbon credits that is one of our focuses 
um, to make sure that that enterprises that work towards break even have a, an additional income stream because the in the markets we quite often see that in order to break even uh, the capex is very difficult because you need long term capital and many of them are able uh, to um, to uh, cover their op uh, operational expenditures out of their cash flow. So I'm going to uh, show you in the next slide how APA for All does that. We are able to provide technical uh, assistance that is either through pipeline development or technical assistance alongside investment funds. We are also able to share very specific water expertise. The second option is, is that we provide de-risking instruments, either through co-investments or, for example, to provide a first loss to comfort investors that might not fully understand the risk available in the market that is out there in the market um, and convince them to start co-investing with us. We also provide guarantees and then thirdly, alternative financing models. One of the examples will be given by Roots of Impact during this webinar, and that this is really an incentive model to get enterprises to scale. And I think, uh, Shabana, um, I'm going to stop here because um, we need to, to focus on the solutions that are out there in the market. I'm very much looking forward to hearing from you, and I wish you good luck and hope to speak to you at the Q&A again. Thank you. Thank you, Yosin, for this wonderful presentation. I think it very well um, sets the scene for our follow-up presentations. So without further ado, I'm going to invite our first speaker. That's Brittany uh, from Grand Challenges Canada. Uh, Brittany. Thanks, Shivana. Um, it's great to be here today. I hope you can all hear me. Uh, I'm Brittany, and I'm an investment associate at Grand Challenges Canada. GCC is a development innovation platform that funds global health innovation in low- and middle-income countries in Canada. And through a gender lens, GCC's Transition to Scale program deploys grant and patient loan capital ranging from 150000 to a million Canadian dollars to enable bold innovations with the potential for big health impact to scale up. And about 14% of our Transition to Scale investments are in sanitation solutions. Um, transition to Scale funding provides the, the catalytic funding required to enable sanitation innovate, innovations to deliver their products and services in commercially viable and sustainable ways. It's really designed to fill the gap in access to, to finance that Yozian talked about and to de-risk early stage sanitation solutions. The funding is connected to milestones that are critical for growth and activities that grant capital uh, tends to be well suited for, such as creating a strong plan for government engagement or a waste to resource solution, um, you know, getting the right team in place or demonstrating the operational efficiencies and level of growth required to engage the right scale up partners. So we recognize that partnerships for scaling up take time to materialize and, and innovators often need additional runway to secure municipal contracts or other types of public private partnerships. And GCC has a toolkit of financial instruments that are targeted, flexible and patient or long term to help right size the level and type of funding that will ultimately be the most meaningful for sanitation innovations at different stages. And we also provide like Aqua for All technical assistance to support entrepreneurs along their journey to scale. And we welcome opportunities to collaborate with other funders that can match and complement GCC's funding and support. So thank you. Thank you, Brittany. Uh, that's really nice to hear how our work is so closely aligned and the need of really the high risk and patient capital that's needed to support innovations and early stage enterprises. So thank you very much for that. With that, I will invite uh, Patricia from Roots of Impact to tell us about a very interesting hybrid funding instrument that can really help impact enterprises um, to become financially um, investable. Patricia, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Shabana. Um, as you know, impact enterprises face many challenges they operate in high-risk regions, um, earn low margins, have small market share, and usually work um, long working capital cycles. Um, the water and the sanitation sector um, might be even more challenging in that respect. If you think of the high upfront infrastructure costs or small fees that um, the companies need to charge their low income and remote customers. 
The question we asked ourselves at Roots of Impact is the following. What if these enterprises that create such big value for society could capture this value um, in the form of monetary returns and at the same time attract private investment to scale? This is the simple uh, but transformative idea behind the social impact incentives or SYNC. SYNC is a blended finance instrument in which premium payments are provided directly to the enterprise for the achievement of social outcomes. Um, as you can see in the following graph, the payments act as an additional revenue stream that improve the overall profitability of the company and help attract investors. This is a win-win-win situation for everyone. Um, you have the enterprise on one side that earns the additional revenue stream and can focus on its impact mission while attracting investors and scaling. Um, you have the donor who pays only for the additional impact which is created. And the investor also benefits indirectly um, because the company becomes more profitable and the investment is less risky. So far, we have tested SYNC in a variety of sectors like health, agriculture, and vocational training. And I'm happy to share that we just launched a new program focused on WASH innovations uh, in partnership with Aqua for All. Um, I'm happy to share uh, more, more details in the link below or answer any questions you may have in the Q&A later. Thank you. Thank you, Patricia. Um, for this presentation and also very excited about the program that we've launched together. Uh, with that, we move to the next presentation um, and that is by Jacqueline from Take a Stake Fund. She will tell us how Take a Stake Fund is uniquely positioned in market compared to other funds. Jacqueline, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Um, yes, it is about patient capital for small and growing businesses. And we just heard about the six, 7% uh, impact investments flowing into uh, WASH. Well, we invite everybody to do more and to take a stake. That's why we called our fund or our initiative Take a Stake. Um, okay, uh, Shabana, yeah, yeah, please. So what do we do as Take a Stake? Well, we invest in small growing businesses in the WASH and waste sector. Um, and we do that in three countries, in Kenya, Uganda, and in India. Uh, we are closely working with uh, other partners. And this initiative, Take a Stake, was really built upon uh, what well, we saw the need to support businesses. And up to now, we have uh, identified a portfolio of about 100 million uh, euro. And you can think of companies in drinking water, companies in toilet building, a lot of companies in fecal sludge, uh, fecal sludge to biogas, fecal sludge to uh, briquettes, uh, to fertilizer. And these are all growing businesses. So it means they already make money. Yeah. Um, so that also uh, shows the, that's your one slide too far, uh, Shabana, one back. Yeah. yeah, so small growing businesses. Thank you very much. Um, and we, how we work, it's very important. We work in existing ecosystems. We really want to build a sector that's create demand, that's uh, work with the government. I'll come back to that uh, on my last slide. But that also means that we really work with local teams and, and it's really based on long-term uh, relationships. Now, what do we offer to these small growing businesses? Money and support, the technical assistance, and the, the investment is about 150,000 to up to 1 million. Next slide, please, Shabana. This one will be a very short one because uh, it shows the valley of death. Yeah, that's our playing field. If you talk about it in a positive way, you call it the pioneer gap. That's where we support the small growing businesses. And then the last slide, Shabana. In the middle of this slide, you'll see this dotted vertical line. On the right-hand side are the investors. But the very important part in Take a Stake is that we link to ecosystems which are already there. There is a government which is already uh, supporting the sector. There are uh, partners uh, active here. There is demand creation because without demand, there 
cannot be thriving businesses. And we also have linked this demand to micro, or not us, but our partners, to MFIs, so there is financing. So that's what Take a Stake does. We are, our intention is to really build this 100 million uh, portfolio. We are now have uh, startup capital, so we hope to uh, be able to make our first investments in the next uh, half year. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jacqueline. And next up is uh, Michael Blocks from Incofin Investment Management, who will be talking about a very interesting and unique impact for his facility, the Water Access Acceleration Facility, initiated with support of the Danone communities and managed by Incofin Investment Management. Michael will be joined by Corinne and Dina during the Q&A session. Michael. Hello, if you can go to the slides. Yes, I'm going to. Hello. I am Michael Blox. I support Incofin's private equity and fund development activities. I'm excited to present the water access initiative that Danone initiated and is the sponsor of. Danone has invested in access to safe drinking water companies since 2007 through its Danone Communities Fund. They observed that companies providing access to safe drinking water became increasingly financially self-sustainable and are in need of capital to scale up. Therefore, Danone launched a new initiative to scale access to safe drinking water and demonstrate that water businesses can provide for interesting investment opportunity. Danone selected Incofin, a global impact investment manager to support the investments. And we are excited to see two types of financial innovations. On the one hand, a model where, a corp where corporates are ready to make impact first investments. And on the other hand, an impact first initiative with an ambition to deliver return. And even though Danone is the anchor investor, it, this initiative is all open to all types of investors ready for impact first investments. What is our objective? On the next slide, please. As I mentioned before, the As I mentioned before, the objective of the initiative will be twofold, scaling access to affordable safe drinking water, and secondly, proving financial sustainability of investment in the drinking water space. We will invest in three types of drinking water business models. First and foremost, in safe water enterprises, which are kiosk networks who have built capability to bring safe drinking water to people who do not have access through pipeline networks. Also, secondly, in a broad range of water technology companies with a focus on simple and affordable technology that can make a difference for people at the bottom of the pyramid. And lastly, we will also invest in the centralized piped infrastructure. We will typically make significant minority investments and hold a board position to actively support our investees in their growth. We will aim to invest three to five million ticket sizes in 10 to 12 portfolio companies and we will be holding our, onto our investments for five to seven years. We will invest globally in emerging markets where access to safe drinking water is most challenging. Uh, and as a result, we will invest in Latin America, Asia, and have a, so a focus for investment in Africa. Of course, we would be very happy to welcome anyone willing to join our initiative. Thank you very much for the more than 230 uh, attendees for their interest. Thank you, Michael, for the presentation. It's a great initiative and partnership between a multinational corporation and an impact investor, both with solid and complementary expertise and track record. And we're really looking forward to make this facility work for the water sector. With that, we move to the final two presentations of today. And these two presentations are by organizations who have extensive experience in mobilizing microfinance for households across many countries, including India, Kenya, and others. Today, both will be presenting their unique financial innovations designed as a result of working for many years on the ground with financial institutions, governments, households, and other key actors. First, I'd like to invite Valentin Post, uh, who's CEO of Finnish Mondial, to present their work on the Sanitation Impact Bond. It is based on a pilot in India together with impact investor Optium. 
Valentin, the floor is yours. Thanks, Shavara. Um, yeah, welcome everyone. It's a pleasure to, uh, to be able to talk, although briefly, on the Sanitation Impact Bond. This is part of a, a Finnish, of Finnish Mondial. It's a partnership program in sanitation. It's a 440 million uh, euro program. And basically, uh, in, based on this program and based on our track record of 200 million uh, euros, we have looked at some of the financial innovations uh, which we can back uh, because of the scale. One of the financial innovations we are looking at specifically is the refinancing of microfinance. So there is a lack of liquidity in the sector. And uh, with our partner Actium, which is an impact investor, we have been developing a proof concept project to develop what we call a sanitation impact bond. And in the proof of concept, we look at all the contractual and legal issues. We also are testing the willingness of investors to buy bonds for a return of three to four percent. And that we do on a, an ongoing pilot, a three million dollar pilot with an MFI in India called Cashpore. Finnish society is working on demand generation and supply side and waste is working on the impact in measurement. Next. So the way it uh, has been set up is we have an investment fund manager or bond issuer that is uh, Actium. The Actium pays waste and management fee to do the impact, uh, uh, impact assessment. Whereas the investment fund manager will lend money to a scheduled bank or MFI, who will uh, lend, onward, uh, lend it onward to the individual to construct toilets. The individual paid back to the bank or MFI who again pays it back to the investment fund manager. Unique in this is that the uh, impact measurement is part of the investment fund manager's fee and also the scheduled bank or MFI pays the demand generation. Now this uh, as we are still in the pilot but we do do know that a, um, a system like this would uh, cannot be done unless it's a minimum size of 100 million euros. So what we have done so far, what we have learned in the pilot is we have worked out the contracting between these different partners. We worked out the impact measurement on loan conversion and usage. And we are on 25,000 sanitation systems constructed out of the targeted 35,000. Um, although it's only two slides, um, I know it's a lot of information. And uh, unfortunately in a live event, my neighbor starting to drill which I cannot control. So let me stop here and thank you for your attention. Thank you, Valentin, for your presentation. Um, you mentioned about launching a 100 million euro bond. I'm really curious to know um, if the market is that big, but we can take it up in the Q&A. Uh, but thank you for your presentation. Um, last but not least, we have Sudhir Arya joining us uh, from India. He's Senior Manager of Partnerships at Water.org, who will be presenting the Global Credit Enhancement Facility Sudhir, the floor is yours. Thank you, Savannah, and welcome everyone. So I'm excited to share the details on uh, one of the innovative financing solution that we have been working on, namely the Global Credit Enhancement Facility or the GCF that will stimulate the lending for water, sanitation, and hygiene by providing potential credit guarantee to domestic, domestic financial institutions. Uh, next slide, please, Shavana. Okay. So, uh, okay, what, what is the problem that we are, you know, trying to solve? So, uh, the previous slide, sorry. Okay, thank you. So, what is the problem that we are trying to solve? So, financial institutions perceive household lending for water and sanitation to be risky. And the GSAF is a solution to address this perceived risk, to get the financial institutions comfortable with this asset class, and hence help unlock significant capital towards people living in poverty. Can you go to the next slide now? Thank you. So GCF is a time-bound partial credit guarantee facility. A special purpose vehicle has been set up in the US under this facility. This SV will have country-specific pools with each country pool enabling guarantees to a multiple financial institutions in that particular country. The guarantees will be collateralized by funding from social investors and IFC. So the GCF would provide risk mitigation and water.org will provide technical assistance to these institutions. In this slide, uh, 
structure looks a bit complex. So uh, let me explain with an example. So let's assume a bank will create a portfolio of $100 million. We are assuming first loss exposure 20%. So in this case, uh, up to $20 million of loss will be equally shared by GCF and bank. So GCF exposure here would be $10 million. And first $5 million will come from the philanthropic donors and later $5 million paid by IFC. And we are planning our first deployment of the facility in India. Can we go to the next slide, please, Shavana? So to summarize, uh, I would say that the Global Credit Enhancement Facility, or the GCEF, is an integrated approach to bridge the financial gap by activating financial institutions with the appropriate risk mitigation and the necessary capacity building help to scale lending for water and sanitation. And also, this is a classical example of blended financing by leveraging development finance to attract private capital to an area they would otherwise find too risky. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sudhir, for this wonderful and very sharp and short presentation. It's indeed very great to see the integrated approach that water.org is following. Also very interesting to note how after working in the market with MFIs, you've now moved towards higher de-risking structures for commercial banks to scale wash landing. So it's all very exciting. And with that, we come to the end of our presentations. Um, before we jump into the q and I'd like to do a quick poll again to see if our audience is still with us. So here we go. Yeah. I think we're going to end the poll here. It, it looks like um, all the financial instruments and innovations have been equally interesting for the audience, uh, with some um, more interest for the sink model and the water access acceleration facility. So that's really promising. Great. OK, I'm going to close this, and then we're going to move on to the q and I'm going to quickly check if we have any questions here. Um, so I would like to first go with a question that I have received separately, uh, and it addresses the COVID situation a little bit, and it is for the water access acceleration facility. Uh, Michael, if you or your colleagues may want to answer this one, what is really the impact of COVID that you are um, going to see on the water businesses that you're screening right now? And do you believe that the pandemic will have any impact on the investments that you're going to make? Michael, Dina? Oh, yeah. You unmute me. Yes. yes. Lovely. Thank you very much, Elena. Um, I think our assessment of the COVID-19 uh, impact uh, is that, and I think it's very much in line with what you've seen and you were saying, is that there is a growing recognition, there is an even higher need of access to safe drinking water to population around the world. So, you know, in terms of kind of uh, realization of the importance of the uh, of this of this impact theme, we do see that there has been uh, a a really a before and after COVID-19 kind of realization. I think that's from a, you know, conceptual uh, perspective. Now, when we look at businesses uh, in the field, uh, we actually see that businesses uh, have witnessed higher volumes uh, of uh, water uh, in their operations. Uh, I, you have, um, you know, in emerging markets, you have populations that have been exposed to hygiene campaigns from the government. Um, their level of, you know, literacy might be low, but they've understood that they needed to be a little bit more cautious with their health. And therefore, you do see uh, that there is an increase of consumption uh, of water uh, at the individual household level. And another interesting find, finding is that uh, we see that these kiosks that already have a very good deep outreach 
if they manage to show to their clients that they are putting in place the appropriate kind of hygiene and safety measures in place, then they start becoming the health agent towards their clients. And that kind of bonding, that kind of recognition of how you know, these people are playing uh, beyond just I'm selling you water uh, type of product is also seen as uh, therefore uh, you know, something positive for these businesses. So overall, we don't see uh, disruption. We see rather an increase of volumes, an increase of sales of water. So that's on the, you know, the businesses Great. themselves. And I would say that on our side as investor, we have uh, local offices around the world. So we are able to continue visiting those businesses with all the cautious measures in place, but we can also you know, continue making that link. Great, thank you, uh, Dina. Yosin, do you wanna add something on um, the COVID response and the work that's been done in the sector? Yeah, sure, thank you, Shabana. And also building on the remarks of what uh, Dina just uh, shared, uh, when we did a review in our portfolios uh, of the entrepreneurs that we've been working with, and indeed, one of the remarks is that, that there's a higher demand for water, but for example, in that case, they do need additional storage capacity. So in order to be able to respond to these kind of initiatives, we established a response facility specifically for COVID and entrepreneurs. Um, and uh, so it's also a call to the audience to see uh, if you have come is across issues or entrepreneurs that are in need, but also uh, please, um, we're still looking to uh, increase the volume of the fund. And it's very, very ne necessary at this point in time because, you know, we've all seen how important access to water and sanitation in those difficult times is. Uh, I think that one of the, the good examples is a deal that we uh, agreed with Sidian Bank in Kenya to guarantee their wash portfolio so that they can continue to on lend to those entrepreneurs that want to respond that, that, to that higher demand in the market. So there are examples and they are too few. We need more. So I'm also very grateful for the question. Great, thank you, Yosin. Um, Valentin, on my question about the 100 million bond, uh, that's a lot of money. Um, there is a question in the Q&A as well. Is the market that big? Uh, yeah, I don't know what's happening because I tried to answer it in the Q&A um, uh, twice, but I don't know if it's coming in or not. Uh, yes, we did a market study and uh, the market shows about a sign in India alone of 1900 million euros. So we are covering about 5% of the market with this bond. Excellent. Thank you, uh, Valentin. Um, there is one question also um, that has come to me uh, is um, for Sink and for Patricia. Uh, what really is the difference between uh, this Sink and a normal social impact bond? Um, right, we receive this question quite often. So um, there are a number of differences, but maybe uh, the most important ones to mention are, um, well, firstly, the SYNC contract is a bilateral contract between the outcome funder and the enterprise. Uh, well, in an um, impact bond structure, it's, it's a more complex structure. So in this sense, um, it's, it's much leaner. Um, also, the enterprise um, um, on the other side is, is able to choose any type of investor they want to work with. And also, um, they can raise any type of repayable investment. So this can be you know, a loan, uh, it can be an equity investment or a mezzanine. Um, and also the incentives that um, we provide are basically fully paid to the value creator, which is the enterprise. So um, all the impact that um, the company generates, it's, um, you know, they, the company receives directly the rewards. Um, and, and then of course, and indirectly, this uh, has also an impact for, for the investor. Um, and yeah, I would say these are the, the major differences. Great, thank you, Patricia. I think we're heading towards the last question, uh, and this is all. Uh, this is and the Q and A as well. Um, it, the, it's a question for Sudhir. Uh, uh, Sudhir, the question is: Is eighty percent exposure by the commercial bank validated by the experience in the light of the NPA situation and now the emerging COVID nineteen um, situation? You need to unmute, Sudhir. Um, oh yeah. 
Yeah, no, uh, thank you uh, for that uh, question. And can you please repeat it again, uh, Shaban? I was struggling to unmute myself. Sure, sure. Um, the question is, is 80% exposure uh, by the commercial bank validated by the experience of the NPA situation in India and now with the emerging COVID-19 um, situation? Yeah, so, uh, you know, the base of the economic pyramid and uh, the people we call like economically active poor and the repayment rate uh, for these people has been uh, really great and close to even uh, you know 99% plus and even during the covid situation the repayment rates has been uh, pretty good for the base of the pyramid uh, people and uh, as we know like now water is as a ppe and the, in fact the demand has been increased uh, for the water and sanitation now and yes, there are certain uh, regulatory conditions like moratorium is there in India. So because of that, lending is hold till uh, at least till 30 of, 31st of August, but the market will open up soon. And the NP trend is not uh, you know that bad in, in this uh, uh, microfinance space. And uh, you know, uh, Valentin has also you know shared like how uh, the FI is uh, really doing great uh, with respect to uh, water and sanitation loans. So yeah, we are pretty hopeful uh, uh, to get uh, pretty uh, good traction on the repayment rate and as well as the end use for this. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to quickly check for one last question. I think we only have three minutes and we have to wrap up. So with that, uh, I'd really like to thank all our speakers and all our partners for their very wonderful, sharp and short presentations because of the limitation of time. Uh, with that, we've come to the end of the session and uh, all of us um, think that these are the key takeaways um, that have come out of all the work that we're doing. Uh, we see a great potential uh, for the catalytic role of the grants or philanthropic capital to really leverage and de-risk investments uh, that need to come into the water and sanitation sector. We still think that there is very limited high risk and patient capital available in the market for SMEs and for startups. So there is need for more of that. Um, Water.org, Finnish Mondial have proven that wash lending for household is not more risky than other types of loans. Um, so there is, um, there is a need and there is potential for scaling that. Um, finally, there is need to really structure financial uh, solutions for the water and sanitation sector based on its need and its ground realities which is not comparable to other sectors. So it's, it's, it's really time for us to look into those realities and needs and then structure solutions. Um, at the end, uh, I'd just like to say that as you can see this team of um, speakers, uh, that we all come from different backgrounds, bring different expertise and knowledge. We have impact investor, we have a multinational here, we have a for profit. And so our key takeaway is really that there is strength in combining our expertise and knowledge to really take the water and sanitation sector forward. With that, thank you very much for joining the session. Uh, you, you will find this slide deck uh, in your inbox by tomorrow. Uh, you can find email addresses of all our speakers. Please do reach out to them and try to explore their work more. And we hope that you um, identify potential partnerships with them. Thank you very much for joining. This is the end of the Stockholm World Water Week at home session. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for organizing.